Hey folks, today is August 21st, 2021, and uh, well, we're taking things to another level. I'm working on getting things lined out, but today's episode of GI Wingnut, welcome by the way, um, is this uh, House Resolution 4. It was just introduced this last Tuesday, so the 17th. Um, it's uh, <laughs> it's crazy stuff, folks. Um I thought this was going to be a long, drawn-out episode, and uh, I think I can boil it down pretty easy, uh, make it fairly short. But I will say that if they uh, leave comments in the uh, down below, where you know, well, the descriptions down below have all the links, and then down below also will be comments on Odyssey. Um, and uh, if you want, I'll take a deeper dive into this, which means I'm going to have to look into stuff like the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Uh, about four or five different U.S. codes, um, how these uh, strikes and, and insertions actually affect the context of these uh, different uh, documents. But uh, as far as an overview on this, um, yeah, let's hit the big stuff. So we've got H.R. 4. It was uh, introduced August 17th, 2021. It's called the John R. Lewis Voting Rights uh, Advancement Act. Um, it's pretty much 66 pages of uh, a bunch of dangerous nonsense. Uh, it was introduced by uh, Representative Sewell, uh, Sewell, Sewell, S-E-W-E-L-L, Sewell, and 191 co-sponsors. Now, what I think is interesting is the fact this is not a bipartisan piece of legislation. There's not a single rhino on this list. That's how toxic this stuff is. So, uh... Let's also look at the fact that there is a very heavy racial bias in this. It keeps making reference to a protected class. Uh, This protected class by federal law is age, race, color, creed, religion. Well, um, they very conveniently leave religion out of out of this document. There is absolutely no mention of religion when it comes to the rights of individuals and potential discrimination. I, I think it's weird. But they do eventually lay into it, get, you know, actually mention uh, disabilities and stuff. But usually they just refer to a protected class or a minority uh, language speaking group. Um, so I'm wondering, does Mimanese, you know, mean warfare? Does Mimanese classify as a minority language? Just a good question. Anyway, and he, you, we'll understand that a little better when we get a little deeper into this uh, towards the end. This bill also promotes at-large seating and bullet voting. With at-large seating, you have to uh, recognize the diversity of a, a, a voting subdivision or a voting state. So if you have a single seat position like governor, we'll go with that. Uh, and, and you have a diverse population in your state, then... Under this law, the governor's seat would become a governor's board, and this board would actually represent the diversity of of the voting region, the voting district, subdivision, state, whatever. So let's say we'll get into this example I put down here. Let's say um, you have a community that is 10% black, or I'm sorry, 10% gay, 20% 20% black, 20% Latin, 10% Asian, and 40% white, and you have a single seat position, well, to break all that down and have everybody represented, you would have to blast that single seat open into a 10-member panel, and one member would have to be gay, two members would have to be black, two members would have to be Latin, one would have to be Asian, and the other four would have to be white. <clears throat> Pardon me. That's how they want to represent diversity. Um, kind of like packing the courts to get their stuff through the way they want it to. And um, I don't, yeah, that's dangerous. Um, next, the uh, federal poll observers. The, uh, there's a transfer of power on that one. Um, it was supposed to be handled by the Office of Personnel Management, but under the John, Lewis, John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, what it would do is it would transfer power over to the attorney general, and then the attorney general would be in charge of uh, assigning, 
observers to the state or subdivision. Well, you know, you see what the, what's going on here. And yet, in this documentation, they make reference to intimidation being an issue at, as a barrier for uh, voters. And uh, I'm just wondering how many voters would not want to go to the poll on election day or even if these observers are at early voting locations uh, where somebody would be standing there wearing some sort of identifier as a, a federal voting observer, a uh, photo ID on a lanyard is clearly marked federal observer or maybe a badge since they're being appointed by the attorney general. Are they going to be an FBI agent? Um, how's that going to work? I mean, seriously. There's also uh, implications in here that, that uh, another uh, voting barrier to uh, minority groups is this, uh, well, it implies that some votes just aren't counted. What? No. Wait a minute. You're actually telling me that you want to make sure that all the votes that count are counted. But Maricopa County. All right, I'm gonna leave that one alone for now. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just, it, I got my show notes here. Um, and that whole thing around 50 Cent, I don't know if you guys remember that, that whole thing when he was gonna, gonna uh, support Trump, and then there was this whole, this whole, oh no, you can't do that, and uh, so you have to come back over here and vote for Biden, and if you do that, da 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 da, -da. rewards, da da da. Well, I called that voter manipulation as soon as I heard it, and I wasn't the only one that felt that way. Well, this straight up calls out that sort of behavior that is actually something that counts as, as a uh, court accessible uh, circumstance. Um, only needs to have one violation for a claim. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So as far as as voting areas they get these um, uh, federal observers they're ones that have a history a history of or are currently um, practicing a string of stuff that would uh, instigate barriers for voters um, one of the groups that highly supports this act is the LGBTQ comp uh, uh, group. Um, the link is down and going to be down below. Um, they straight up feel like uh, current voting standards are are loaded with barriers against them or discriminatory against them simply because of the fact that their their government issued ID may have a different gender than they feel in their head. Uh, so. They feel like that's a voting barrier that because they're excluded. But if they're still a registered voter, I mean, if it's all legit, what's stopping you from voting other than you? Anyway, so yeah, there's uh, uh, so let's use the example of your um, your your constituents. Let's say you have a hundred thousand constituents and 10% of them are lepers. So that means 10,000 people in, in your district have leprosy. And you fail to provide them with whatever provisions are needed to still allow them to be able to vote. If you don't do that, you would be in violation of this law. But also, if there's just one person out of that 10,000 that says, oh, I felt like this one particular thing out of this entire list um, was violated. That's enough for him to, him or her to go to one of these social groups like the ADL or the Arab American Foundation, the ACLU, the NAACP, any of these organizations. And these organizations could represent them and say, hey, and this could create a real impact on the election system. It can have, as you can imagine, a real strong dampening effect on um, voting laws once things are said. Of course, we know anybody who grabs power is not going to be willing to give it up. Um, something else I found interesting is, yes, 
they uh, they do support outside of this documentation. They do support they the left um, support this whole motor voter thing. You get a driver's license, and you're a registered voter, whether you've proven citizenship or not. Or you know now they got that real ID. So if you're a citizen, you get a gold star or something. I don't know. I don't really understand all that. But um, in this particular case, um, that that circumvents what the the election laws have said about eligible individuals. They have to prove citizenship. They have to prove residency. They have to prove a list of things, including who the heck they are. But with motor voter registration, you get a driver's license, you're automatically a registered voter. And that has been an issue for a long time. But under this law, it reinforces the whole concept that voter ID is unconstitutional. Get an ID and become a voter, but you don't have to show your ID to vote. Hmm. Anyway, so this is this is why this video is going to be so daggum short in the in, in the long of it. Um, the the link for the PDF is down below. And if you want to go grab that real quick and then come back to this point, that's fine. If you just want to make a note of what I'm talking about or you want to come back to it, it's fine. Um, but anyway, the most dangerous thing that I found that I want to bring up, and this is the last thing I'm going to talk about because after this point, it doesn't really matter what else they say when it comes to a, uh, a patriotic flag-waving sort of uh, concept for life, you know, that whole freedom thing. But anyway, on uh, page 10, lines 1 and 2, right there at the top of the page. Oh yeah, by the way, like I said, this is 66 pages long, but it's in large print. There's only 25 lines per page. So, this 66-page bill is big enough for Nancy to read even later in the afternoon, you know, after she, anyway, 10, 2, and 4, you know what I mean. But, um, yeah, anyway, page 10, lines 1 and 2. It's paragraph 4, subparagraph F. And this is, this is what does not matter as a barrier or a voter issue. Okay, and I'm going to quote F. Mere invocation of interests in voter confidence or prevention of fraud. End quote. So, long and short of that. When it comes to your voting rights, if this passes, the demand for an audit is not a qualifying issue to get you into court if you have a problem with how the election went. If you felt like a barrier was put in your way and you're a minority on this list, which if you want me to, I can go back and I can visit all this, I will do it. But if you just want the, the rough sketch of it, this is what you get. But um, yeah. Uh, I really don't need to go any further. I mean, it's, it's, it's plain and simple. They're not hiding anything anymore. Um, they're, they're coming hard. And so while Afghans, Afghanistan fell a week ago and there's all this hubbub going on about how we're going to get Americans out and I'm not going to get off into all that. I'm just using that to point out a bit of wisdom that I've picked up along the way. In words recently that that a lot can understand but when you see a big story presented in the news dig for the story they're trying to hide right here they're trying to hide your rights they're trying to steal them and if they can take away your voting rights and uh, well we can get into some of the uh, some of the other details if you want to just leave a comment down below if you're on Odyssey um, on locals, I don't have a banking set up yet, so uh, membership is not available at the moment. I will see about getting that set up this next week or maybe the week after that. I'll be going back to Columbia. Got to go to the bank to do that. But anyway, that's really all I have to say for right now. I mean, I don't know what else to say about HR four, um, except that we got to get it stopped. So you need to get on your representative. Uh, and not just your representative. Um, like I said, there's 
192 names on this thing in the House. Not a single Republican. And so toxic a rhino won't touch it. Trust me. But yeah, it takes the power from the Office of Personnel Management and uh, shifts federal observer assignments over to the Attorney General. I don't see what could go wrong with that. And then on top of that, you can't request an audit or at least you, you could do an audit, but you can't get into court, so it wouldn't do you any good to do the audit because you couldn't have the audit enforced. Maricopa County, Antrim County, Fulton County, Georgia, and Georgia in general. New Hampshire, there's a lot going on. Oklahoma, Texas. There's people working ground roots in Missouri on uh, CTL or CTCL. Uh, monies that Mark Zuckerberg, uh, what is it, Center for Technical and Civil Living, um, dropped a whole bunch of money in, in 40 plus counties in the state of Missouri. There's people working uh, sunshine laws to get the information on how that money was spent, how it got in, who, who signed for it, and tracking it down. You know, they're looking for accountability. That would not fly if HR 4 passes. See what I'm saying, people? See what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm going to close it up here. And I'm just going to say, may God bless America and her patriots too.